The finals of the Girls High School Showcase at the U.S. Open. This is not for a world team spot, but this is a very solid tournament. Very deep brackets, as you'll see. We're in the finals. Just about everybody's ranked. And we're going to kick things off at 100 pounds. Here in Las Vegas at the U.S. Open, that's Jacqueline Buzakis in the red. She's ranked first in the nation at 100 pounds, taking on Marley Solomon in the blue. Buzakis just missed making the U17 world team about a month ago. And now she's out here getting more reps, improving, working on a two-on-one. She wrestles for Wyoming Seminary. There's going to be a lot of Wyoming Sem girls here in these finals. Snap down, looking to get two. Hold on to that, that elbow, that right elbow of Buzakis, but Buzakis gets around enough, and she's got two confirmed. Down on a lace. Well, it just has a bent leg there going underneath the body to grab that, grab those toes, so. No score on Parterre, but a 2-0 lead for Buzakis. Her brother Vince is here in the tournament. Nick wrestles for Ohio State. A lot of wrestling in the Buzakis family, originally from Florida. I believe they may have roots in New York, but I got to double check. And then, of course, Jacqueline wrestling in Pennsylvania at Wyoming Sam. She's taking ground from Solomon. He's about to get a passivity warning, but Buzakis is just going to go ahead and score some points and moot that passivity. Good job going behind the knees, driving forward to get the, uh, oh, wow, running that arm bar at least two more. And Solomon wisely rolled all the way through. But fighting through that quad pod defense was Buzakis, and she has not stopped wrestling since the whistle blew. And we're going to go back to our feet, 6-0 lead for Buzakis. Solomon unranked, but not for much longer. Pressing for Team Thunder in California. You can't make the finals in this tournament without beating some ranked wrestlers, so expect to see her in the next national rankings. Solomon beat Lisa Pastoriza, Katie Biscaglia, and Lily Breeden. I believe they're all ranked. Just to make it to Buzakis, who's one of the best wrestlers in the nation uh, for her age. Had beaten Morgan Turner in Fargo in the finals there to win a Fargo championship, and then that was in 2023, but then in the spring of 24, Turner got revenge at the team trials. Just missing on a shot there is Buzakis. So Morgan Turner will be the U17 rep, but I expect Buzakis will make quite a few age level world teams as she continues her career. Nice defense from Solomon. She's got Buzakis flat on the mat. She's on her toes, driving forward, trying to score in the final two seconds. Buzakis holding on by fingertips. And wow, look at that. Tenacity from Jacqueline Buzak is not to give up those points. There's Cornell Robinson in the corner. He's the head coach of both Wyoming Sem teams. Solomon getting instruction from her coaches. Final seconds of the break. Back to the center. Second period underway, six point lead for Buzakis. She's in control of this bout, it's not over yet. A little sweep single, drag into a single, and now a back trip, and that should be four. Yeah, reaching it deep with that trip, and that is 10-0, so we didn't have much of the bout to go in the second. Jacqueline Buzakis, dominant performance. 
She is your champ. She had nothing but tech falls, and she went unscored upon in her four matches here. So OW candidate Jacqueline Buzakis ranked first in the nation, although that was before the matches at the 17 trials. Very impressive, nonetheless. And then she gets a fancy, uh, fancy belt there. There she is walking on the screen, shaking hands. Getting some pronunciation down there with both wrestlers. That's Rianne Murphy in the red, another Wyoming SEM wrestler. There's going to be a bunch of them. And Taylor Whiting, AWA, Ashton Wrestling Academy. Although Nazar Kuchitsky is in a corner. Team Nazar. So probably going to several different wrestling clubs, places to train. Only makes sense. Nice low shot. Gliding across the mat is Murphy. Quick finish, and she'll get the first two. Looking for a cradle now. Cross face cradle for Rian Murphy. She won't get it, though. Murphy went sixth in the nation at 105 pounds. Whiting seventh, but up at 110. You'll see some rankings and some weight classes here at the tournament that don't quite line up, but that you know that happens in the off season or after the, the school year. A lot of weight changes are going to happen. Oh, and a uh, mixer attempt goes bad for Whiting, and Murphy will pick up two more. Murphy wrestled at who's number one last year. This tournament will definitely go, will factor into who gets an invite for the 2024 edition. Rianne Murphy, though, ineligible. She's from Valparaiso, Indiana, and is a senior at Wyoming SEM, so she's out of high school after this. Took a very close fought bout, or took a loss to uh, Madison Neuenheis. Who's number one? One minute remaining in the first period. Four point lead for Murphy. And she's going headlock, got the head in the arm. She throws Whiting to her back. She have at least four. Murphy trying to bridge. She's in a very compromised position. Murphy loaded her up and got the fall. I don't even know if Murphy can breathe in that position. No fall yet, but she's got time to work. Now Murphy trying to kick a leg out. This looks pretty tight. I don't know how Whiting's able to continue to fight. And Murphy getting mean with it. Still not uh, flat, and there it is. Rianne Murphy gets the fall. Good fight from Whiting. That was just too tight. And Rianne Murphy is your champion. She's going to get a fancy belt, a championship belt. And Wyoming Sem goes two for two in the finals. Thank you. All the coaches. Coming out. And that was a uh, quick belt ceremony. We're moving on to the next round. Emma Albanese, Legends of Gold, Las Vegas, a local. And Libby Robert, Roberts in the blue in the Northwest Wrestling Training Center. 
in the Pacific Northwest. Roberts from Spokane, Washington. That's the inland part. It's not on the coast, but it is in the Pacific Northwest. Snapped down by Albanese from Las Vegas and attends Slam Academy, trying to get a go behind. Arm bars and spins around. She gets two, Albanese in the lead. Trap arm, takes her through for two more. 4-0 lead for Albanese, still has that arm trapped. Looks to take it to the left and we'll go up to our feet. Albanese ranked 10th in the nation at 115, even though we're at 110. Now in on a shot is Roberts. She loses her grip though, and now it's Albanese trying to get the go behind. That trailing arm. Roberts has it by the elbow, so nothing yet. There's two though. Around the waist and totally behind the hips and arms. So Albanese powers through. She's running a half. Roberts trying not to go. And good fight, that takes some guts. Back to neutral. Charging ahead is Roberts, she gets a leg. But Albanese's been very tough to score on so far. She's had all the counters for Roberts. I'm just kind of back hook that elbow. See if she can get a turn out of that. She doesn't. She does lead 6-0 though. Albanese with Tougher path to the finals than Roberts, at least according to the scoreboard. Although Roberts is in a very tough one with uh, Rihanna Uderbach. In the semis, Albanese 5-4 over Amelia Murphy, Wyoming Sem. And going out of bounds, that's gonna be at least one, and now we have Caution as well. So one on the step out. And then one on the caution and one, yep. You back out of bounds, they're doing a good job of calling that now. It's a rule that makes sense. I think it was a year or two ago, UWW made that a point of emphasis. Can't just say, all right, well, I'll give up one. That's not what the step out rule is for. It's not a refuge. Somebody's got you in trouble, you gotta counter that move. Fight it, do something, but you can't just walk out of bounds. Sometimes you don't have much of a choice. But caution on the board for Albanese and two points for Roberts. Two one point scores though, that distinction is important when it comes to tie-breaking criteria. Back to action, second period. Drop it down on a leg is Albanese, the right leg of Roberts. Eve sprawl, sprawl by Roberts. Trying to thread the head and hands. But Albanese staying down on that leg. Good stick to itiveness. And Roberts earns that stalemate.
Roberts taking ground, but then headlock to the mat, feet to back is full, uh, no, just two. It said they hit the mat, not in danger. Oh, big lift from Roberts. Have to get a turn to the right. All right, good counter by Albanese. And there's blood. Albanese says, not my blood, I don't think. Both these wrestlers juniors from the West, Spokane and Las Vegas. There's a shot from Roberts, low double. She's got two, trying to transition into a turn. She's gonna take her towards the head. And white paddled, no score. Interesting. Option for Roberts to go with. Man, two points would have made it a one point match if she got that turn, but she didn't. So eight to five. Again now, Roberts takes Albanese out of bounds. Right into Albanese's corner, eight to six. Albanese has her left arm taped up. She might need to train her again. Right, she shakes it off, back to the center. See if Roberts has more in her tank. She's taking a little ground from Albanese. Just a bit over a minute to go. Great battle, back and forth. Snap down from Roberts, although she gets a little out of position. Albanese back down on the leg. This is two and up clock, which Roberts doesn't want, but it works to Albanese's advantage. Pulls on that trailing arm, just gonna try to get behind. Albanese not letting go with the other arm, though. Still a lot of clock being taken up. And there is the stalemate, 32 seconds. I believe Roberts is going to need more than two as we have a little bit more blood. And Roberts corner probably wants to clean that up and get that worked on quickly as Albanese might be taking advantage of this extra break time. Roberts, uh, Roberts coach, now that's maximum effort on the cleanup. Appreciate that. Be commended for that effort. 25 seconds to go. Roberts doesn't want to be tied up here. Albanese hanging on the head. Can't pull down with two hands, but one hand is fine. Albanese shoots. Roberts trying to run around. She's picking an ankle. She's pulling singlet big time. Yeah, that's clear singlet pull. That's her second caution. So they were in parterre when the caution was called. Roberts' coach said, uh, wanted to know if that was going to be caution in two for. He's getting, uh, Robert's getting different advice. Didn't want to start down, so they go back up. 
And then Roberts right off the whistle. She's got a leg. She's got six seconds to work. Nice finish. Does she get the takedown? Wow, Albanese stays on her feet. And there's going to be a challenge. Albanese. So I don't know if. So they want another singlet pull, and they said there was a fish hook. Did uh, Roberts's corner? That would be the third caution, so it would be the match. Um, but. Otherwise, Albanese did not give up the takedown. It'll be 8-7 win if this challenge fails. I'm still a little confused over the, the parterre. I, I think the coaches were not correct. I don't think they should have. All right, so no, no penalty, no caution. So Red's the winner. I don't think Roberts should have been able to just say we're going to go neutral. It sounded like one of the head referees said that that should not have been allowed and should have been cautioned and won on Roberts for refusing to be in part there. I don't know though, I have to check that out. But that was a weird, weird ending. Uh, both wrestlers fought really hard, so don't want that to overshadow the effort that they um, put forth. Roberts needed uh, to win by two there anyway. But she would have had with the takedown. So incredible effort by Albanese and Roberts. And we're moving on. And 115 pounds. These two have some history. Claire Bowie and Gabriela Gomez. They were in a hard fought who's number one bout. In 2023, so just last October, came down to a throw, feet to back. That was on the boundary, but that's uh, Claire Bowie in the red. Wrestles at Wyoming Sound, originally from Florida. Gabrielle Gomez, Gomez wrestlers, Gomez wrestling. Family of wrestlers. An older sister and older brother. Austin Gomez is going to be on the Mexican Olympic team and wrestle in Paris. And Gabriella has uh, hopes of doing that as well. Two on one for Bowie. She's moving Gomez around. And a little snap down on that arm. She's got Gomez and Quad Pod. Now two for Bowie. She's got a 2-0 lead. Gomez has to open. Power half for Bowie. She's working hard on that move. He's, this is number two and number six. Bowie's number two. Gomez number six in the nation at 115. Gomez trying to get the minor upset, but she's beaten Bowie before. Gomez is going to get a passivity. That's a verbal. Back to that two-on-one for Bowie. Now throwing in a wizard, trying to hip Bowie over as they go towards the edge of the mat. No scores. One minute remaining here in the first period. Snap down onto a single leg. Gomez trying to plant that foot on the ground. 
Bowie skies the foot in the air and right into the far scoring table. But they don't actually bump into it. So one point for Bowie. Blast double by Gomez. That's stuffed by Bowie. Now she's got a sprawl right on top of Gomez. Gomez back down to the mat. Good defense by Bowie. Peeling the hands. Bowie trying to get two more. Two offer, but that's white paddle. Gomez hasn't given it up yet. She's locked around that leg. Bowie has to peel that arm, and now she's got the trap arm. That should be two and another. Or just two in parterre. She goes around again, that's two more, so it's at least nine. Yes, nine on the board. One more turn, time runs out. So you see the Wyoming Sem crew gathered around Bowie's corner. We'll have at least two more Wyoming Sem wrestlers after Bowie. Wyoming Sem trying to go three for three so far. That's Rianne Murphy with a camera. Getting picks. She won a championship. Jacqueline Buzakis. Right behind the corner. She's got a belt. Heavy hands from Gomez. Has a little shuck. Doesn't land. Looking for a trip. Now a headlock. And Bowie, too strong. Powers through. She's going to get two more. And an 11 0 tech. Revenge from who's number one. Bowie looks over at her corner. A little cheering section. And tough one for Gomez. She'll be back. But today's not her day. And here comes Bowie to get her belt. One hundred and twenty pounds moving right along. Zeo Estrada in the red, wrestling out of South Carolina. Hilton Head taking on Carly Brooks in the blue. Two seniors in high school. Try to get that go behind. Estrada fights through Brooks, and she gets the two first two of the bout. Good action right off the whistle. Trying to do a bent leg, bow and arrow, get the turn, and good turn. That's one bow and arrow, two bow and arrows, a third one to make it 8-0, one more. Whistle is blown. And so just the three turns, and now Carly Brooks in a big hole. She wrestles at Valiant Prep in Arizona from Phoenix. Got Angel Cejudo in the corner. Snap down. That's just going right at Estrada. Oh, she had a head and an arm, was thinking headlock. That would be a huge turn of events. But instead, she just gives up two, or Estrada does. Doesn't have to fight off her back. But now it's Brooks with a trap arm, and she goes over one side. Estrada turns in, she's able to belly out to just that one turn. So Brooks answering with a takedown and turn of her own. Eight to four, back and forth. We're not even halfway done with the first period. Oh, 
Reaching in is Estrada. Brooks trying to slide by. And there is a hip toss, but White Paddle, good job by Estrada to cartwheel over, and now they're in a scramble position. They're going all out. Back to neutral. They're expending a lot of energy. in the first two minutes. Shot from Estrada, she's in on a leg, but another scramble position. More energy needing to be spent. Brooks has her stretched out. Brooks grabs an ankle, now locked around the crotch. Trying to get a turn. She had some good leverage, Estrada flattens out. Very flexible hips and torso. I don't know how you get in those positions, but it helps you avoid getting turned. Estrada ranked third in the nation, up at 125. She's down at 120. Brooks, second in the nation. So when I said these were deep brackets, it's because of rankings like that. Top wrestlers in the nation. Now there's a double from Brooks. She's going to get two in short time. So there's another two points for Brooks. She makes it eight to six. Estrada raced out to an 8-0 lead. Brooks comes storming back at six unanswered points. Coach Estrada, her father in the corner. Uh, Zayo gets a little towel flapping. Andrew Cejudo in the corner for Carly Brooks. Also a Titan Mercury athlete. Estrada back to the center. Brooks is there as well, so we got the second period going now. Estrada reaches in, Brooks fights off that attack ear to ear in the center of the mat. <laughs> Tough hand fight, let's see who's got more in the tank. Oh, nice ankle pick by Brooks. Estrada gets her legs back. Wow, great defense, the flexibility These two women is incredible. And now in a head and an arm, trying for a whip over. Is there a step out? Is there points for Estrada? Nothing and nothing being. Everything white paddled. Down in uh, parterre, they said, grounded. So two minutes to go. This has been a brawl. Snap for Brooks, but Estrada right in on the legs. She get her hips behind Brooks. She does. Two more, her first score since the uh, opening sequence. 10 to six, so she's got a four point lead. 90 seconds remain in the match. Both wrestlers taking deep breaths. Back to the center. Let's see if stamina has or comes into play here. Got to pull up on that elbow and create some space with Brooks. Wasn't able to get through onto Estrada. Dives in on an ankle, good counter from Estrada. She's been able to weather the storm from Brooks and another go behind and it's 12 to six. Defense, 
Estrada picking her spots. The knees coming out to the side, so Estrada trying to go back to that bow and arrow and couldn't get the knee going the way she wanted. So they come back up to neutral. He can pull it uh, back, straight back, but once it comes outside the hips, he can't start messing around with knees. 30 seconds, headlock. As Estrada goes over, she does, and now she's in danger of getting pinned. Brooks with a huge feet to back, Estrada. She relaxed at the wrong time. 12 to 10, she's still in the lead. She's got 20 seconds to fight. Was there a fall, white paddled. She didn't get pinned yet. Now she's in a high bridge. She's got 12 seconds. And there's the fall with nine seconds left on the clock. What about Carly Brooks had just enough left in the tank for a headlock and Estrada is gonna be rightfully bummed out about that. She fought hard, put on a great show. Both wrestlers did, but Carly Brooks pulls out victory from the jaws of defeat. Impressive. Two exciting wrestlers. That's Emma Bacon in the red, another Wyoming Sem wrestler. I told you there were a bunch of them, and her opponent, Cadence Gerg. Emma Bacon go right in on the inside trip. Doesn't land. Gerg steps out of danger. And the head and the arm. Two for correct throw. Bacon go for the kill early on. Gerg, belly's out. Gerg, the number one ranked wrestler, but up at 140. She's dropped down to 125. So change of weight classes, and Emma Bacon ranked seventh at 170. She's up a weight class. She's just a freshman at Wyoming Sem. Gerg is a junior from Idaho. She had a tremendous match against Valerie Hamilton at who's number one last year. And she has some of the most colorful hair in the game as well. And the purple hair there. Inside trip to a headlock. Bacon going for the big moves, like it. Scared money don't make money, as they say. So that was a slip or a risk, meaning if you risk, giving up a counter on those big shots, big moves. But it's a restart. Good counter go behind for Gerd. And who stepped out first, or will we get two on continuation? So they're saying Gerd stepped out, and we get a challenge from a corner. Again, I was right on the border. I don't know if I saw it very clearly, so I'm not going to hazard a guess. I thought you could have gone continuation too and given Gerd two points, uh, or one of the other stepped out. Taking a look at it. Roberts definitely stepped out 
after in the middle of that sequence. Brick back, so and so Gerg stayed in bounds, and it was Roberts that stepped out. So two to one, chopped that lead in half. And we're back in business. Roberts on the attack. Back up to neutral, Bacon trying to crowd the center. The game within the game, you see different guys, different folks, different strategies, how aggressive you want to be there. Roberts with Gerg to the boundary, and now she'll step out. And Roberts gets a point there. Three to one, two point move would put Gerg in the lead via criteria with the three three score. Bacon nearly had a single leg, dives back in, Gerg, deep sprawl. Front headlock for Gerg, it's on her toes, pushing Bacon out. Is that part there, or are we going to get one? One blue it is. Good job, Gerg, picking Bacon up off the mat. Short time left, three to two. Hard fought out. Good wrestling from both of these competitors. Final seconds of the period. And we're going to go to the break. Eight more bouts to go after this one. Going to weight class order here at the U.S. Open Girls High School Showcase. Cornell Robinson back in the corner. With another Wyoming Sun wrestler. Dirk's coach in the corner. He's been smiling this whole match. Love to see that kind of attitude. You can see Gerg takes that attitude with her onto the mat. Happy to be out there. Happy to be competing. That's what you want to see. Bacon going right at Gerg. Gerg front headlock. And once again, Gerg trying to pick. Bacon up off the mat. Bacon stayed grounded that time. Back in the collar ties. Anyone's bout at this point. Although one point won't be enough to take the lead. Now they're in the second period, we start thinking about those criteria scenarios. Bacon's got the inside trip, the headlocks that she gets those swing singles going as well. It's a good varied arsenal. Gerg a little more straight on, meat and potatoes style. It's gonna also be very effective. Now we got a verbal warning. Attention. Not the backup. Minute 45 to go. Gerg slaps in an underhook on the right side. Thinks about a throw by. He's going to underhook on the other side. Bacon pushing back in. 
Now Bacon's taking ground. And a throw attempt with the overs. And that backfires on Gergen. Bacon looking for the fall. And that is it, Emma Bacon at the edge of the mat. Gerg goes big, Bacon makes a pay. But that was a uh, fun performance, good match. Both wrestlers going forward. Emma Bacon, very impressive. Freshman in high school. And you see Gerg's not happy about it, but the corner. Knows that uh, it's still a sport. And that's supposed to be fun, so. I like to see the smiles from the coaches no matter what happens. And there's Bacon, she's even more pumped because she just got a very cool belt for winning. now at 130 pounds, that's Samantha Sachs from Glendora High School in California. Takes a shot, has Sophia Slaughter in the blue. They both have black singlets, but the blue trim for Slaughter from the Virginia Assassins Wrestling Club. California and the Commonwealth on the mat. Throw by from Slaughter, ooh, good recovery by Sachs. But Slaughter with the knee pull gets the exposure. And right in front of our camera. Having to make sure nobody runs into us. So 2-0 for Slaughter. She's unranked, but she won't be unranked for much longer. Samantha Sachs ranked eighth in the nation at 125. We're up a five pound difference there. She's a junior at Glendora High School. Front headlock for Sachs. Slaughter tries to drag out of that. Short offense. We'll get stalemate back to the center. And Sachs. Elbow giving her some issues. She's got it taped up, the right elbow. Hopefully she can continue. Check out Sax's elbow. Slaughter will get chat with the coaches a little more. So Sax is going to be okay. No cold spray. You only see that internationally. I don't like cold spray. Videos. Do more. Man, injuries, it's part of Part of the sport, I hate to see it, but sometimes you gotta wrestle through them or give it your best, and sometimes your body doesn't let you. So 
Sachs is going back at it. Slaughter wrestles out of a position. Sacks right back in. Front headlock for Slaughter. At the front head, was thinking about throwing it by. Another nice shot from Sacks. Oh, but picking the leg and broom sticking. It's gonna be four for Slaughter. That was nifty. Knee pick, broomstick with the other leg. And that's um, nifty single leg defense. Really impressed by Slaughter this tournament. She should be in the ranking soon. Not sure what grade she's in either. She's the 15th seed. Took out Taylor Ellis Highshaw in the semis. That was an impressive bout, seven to four. Highshaw, very good wrestler. Final minute, Slaughter with that feet to back in a really strong position now, eight to two. And there's a fireman's, that's four, that's it. And Sachs, elbow was not cooperating. Up to 135, that's Isis France. She's ranked fourth at 140 down a weight class, taking on number 16, Timberly Martinez. In the blue, France in the red. France, I believe, is the last Wyoming Sun wrestler 
we have in the finals. Martinez looking for a headlock, but no slip. We'll call it two for France. And Martinez corner is saying that should have been risk or a slip as it's collo colloquially known. I think I said that word right the one back. I didn't. And they'll review. So France was around the body. So I can see why they might let that stand. They're going to do it in slow motion. See the replay on the big board. France goes for a knee. Headlock by Martinez. France. Kind of catches her, but how much did she catch her by? This is the gray area. Ooh. I think she kind of tugs on the hips enough to stop the momentum. Still looking at it. I'll make sure they... Get this one right. So challenge lost. Two is confirmed. One more point for France. And just barely caught the caught the hips and stopped the momentum. Looked like a slip in real time to me, but I think they got it right on the replay. Ankle pick by France. And two more. France came out guns blazing off the whistle. Go back up to neutral. France looking for another ankle pick. She's in on a double, looking for the neck wrench was Martinez trying to counter. But France, a little creativity. Just gonna hip all the way over, try to elevate using the leg that Martinez is grabbing a hold of. Timberly Martinez. Colorado, part of the MJ Mustangs Wrestling Club. Isis France, Wyoming Sam, as mentioned. Martinez from Denver, Colorado, goes to Pomona High School. Back on that cross ankle attack. It's been working for France. She picks up two more, has a minute to work. Three points away from the tech. Double for Martinez, but countering is France. She's got two more. We'll make it 9-0. And her shoulder. I think uh, Martinez is going to be okay. She might have panicked a little bit when France was elevating, trying to pin her. So back in parterre they go. Martinez shook, shook that off pretty quickly and went back down in parterre. And again, that one looks a little bit worse for Martinez. France with the bent leg. And Martinez not having a good time on him. 
the mat right now, right leg she was grabbing. She might be a little shook up. Back to back, painful moves. And France not doing anything uh, malicious, nothing uh, even borderline. Just sometimes you get caught in some painful moves. And um, no, there was a was a caution. So bow in the leg too much. Not heeding the whistle. So maybe it was the placement of the other hand. You can't. And the handshake of sportsmanship. Martina shakes that one off too. I think maybe the way France was bowing that leg. Certainly possible, you know, we to bow a leg and grab the head, but if the other arm doesn't allow it, I don't know. I have to look at that position again, but France gets it done there. And there's the tech fall. Martinez, good fight, but all ice is France. She is your champ. France is the fifth Wyoming Sim champ. Quite the team. All right, Luis Jewett. That's how she checked in. Keep going with that pronunciation. Morgan Lucio. Another valiant wrestling club. Second Valiant Prep, Carly Brooks the other. And we're underway. Jewett in the red, Lucio in the blue. We're at 140 pounds. Lucio, just a sophomore from Casa Grande in Arizona. Passivity warning on Jewett. Yes. Lucio on a shot, Jewett now countering. He's got a near side cradle. Two on the board already. Did you get a turn? Head in the side, she's got to go pretty soon. You get time to work, but you have to put someone in danger for more time than 10 or 15 seconds. Do it unranked. That will probably change. Mo West Championship Wrestling Club. Western Missouri would be Kansas City area, so that's going to be my guess where she's from. halfway through the first period. Now Lucio is going to go or get a passivity. Just a verbal, the first. One minute remaining. So the first period, though. Yeah. 
Ear to ear, collar ties. We're gonna get a restart there. Fresh start for both of them. Lucio taking a little bit of ground. Jewett pushes back. Caution blocking by Jewett. No negative wrestling is allowed. Slide by attempt by Lucio, doesn't land. Everything white paddled. So we hit the break. Our second period is underway. Still a two point lead for Jewett. Jewett taking ground. And was that a step out? So. Table judge was in position, he called it immediately. So a point for Jewett. Lucio stepped out. And sometimes you're just not in a great vantage point to see those when you hear the whistle. Headlock. Looks like a head and an arm, but can't be under the neck too much. Lucio looks like she's got a little bit of a black eye there on the left side. But unsurprising, you run the gauntlet, getting through these brackets. There are no easy paths to the finals here. The way these, the way this tournament brought out really good talent all across the country. East Coast, West Coast. And short offense. She was trying to get a go behind. She's from to work. She gets behind the elbow. Spins around and now it is 5-0 with 90 seconds to go in the match. So Lucio running out of time. Five points, not insurmountable, but well, that'll help. Quick drag, she's behind. She have a trap arm? Yeah, just a gut wrench. And no turns, we go back to the center. Just a minute remaining, but that was a big two-point score for Lucio. So you can get a takedown and a turn, takedown and a step out. Time is taking away. 40 seconds. And I see a couple coaches cheering for Jewett with uh, Kansas City on their shirt. Stepping in front. Jewett's behind, but you have to clear those legs. You can't be in a Merkel position. And Lucio powers through. Her heads are out of bounds, though. And 
Wow, caution for fleeing back in Parterre. Lucio will have the lead. I'm not sure how that was fleeing, but. So there's the brick for Jewett. Wow, great fight by Lucio. I think she went for a turn and um, but Jewett was already out of bounds. Thought you had to do more than that to flee. But. Take a look at it. Did she crawl forward to avoid action? I don't know if they'll be able to overturn this based on the evidence. Yeah, given that, it's probably not definitive one way or the other. I think they're going to let it stand. Which will be tough because then Jewett will have to go back down to Parterre, and there's just 17 seconds left. And then rewinding, rewinding, rewinding. Now we get the other camera angle. And it is white paddled, so out of bounds before the fan. So five to four, and big break for Jewett. Great challenge, too. And Jewett needs to wrestle for 15 seconds. Lucio just needs a step out, I believe, the criteria. Four seconds, Lucio is close. Jewett's gonna hold on. And it's Louise Jewett for Missouri West. Mo West Championship Wrestling Club. Hard fought bout, and she is your champ. First period underway at 145 pounds. Another battle between two highly ranked wrestlers. Whoa, go for the headlock huge. That was Valerie Hamilton, number two in the nation on Belicia Manuel. Looking for the fall right off the bat. Pulling on the head, that's tight. I don't know how Manuel gets out of that. Readjusting is Hamilton. There's the fall in under 30 seconds. Brutally efficient and a hug for good sportsmanship. Valerie Hamilton, man, loaded that up and let her rip. Now Hamilton coming out of Illinois. Felicia Manuel, one of many or three Manuel sisters from Michigan. Valerie Hamilton will take the belt. She's got it. So Matilda Ruby and Billy Bonwell are on the mat now. They skip 155. We'll have to figure out what happened at 155, maybe a forfeit. I will look online. But in the meantime, we've got Ruby 
in the red. Looking for a headlock of her own on Bonwell. She's still running her feet. Bonwell didn't go. Bonwell. Avoids disaster, white paddled. So we almost have back-to-back -back headlock falls. And now Bonwell taking ground throw by, by Ruby, and Ruby takes her out of bounds. Is that four, two? Four offered, two offered, four confirmed. So Ruby with four on the board. And yes, Kylie Manuel uh, forfeit to Duda Eduarda Rodriguez. So Eduarda, Eduarda Rodriguez is your champ at 155. Hence, we didn't have that match. We got this one ripping a headlock again is Ruby. And she'll keep driving with her feet to get two. And Ruby leads 6-0 now. Number nine in the nation at 170. Matilda Ruby from the Brighton Wrestling Club in Colorado. Oh, more upper body, more headlocks. Bonwell goes over, two more, looking for the fall. Ruby's close, got about an inch or so to keep going. Bonwell's doing her best. And that is real close. That looks like the fall right in front of us. Matilda Ruby, headlock city. And we do go back to back headlock falls. What is this, headlock city? There's the belt. That's a nice collection to any trophy case. USA Wrestling did a good job with those. I like the belts. So final two bouts coming up now. We'll see if we go back to back to back headlocks. We're underway at 190 pounds. Isabella Phillips in the red, the black singlet. Says Iron Maidens. Very much approve of that singlet. The Outlaws Wrestling Club taking on Ella Murphy from Tennessee. Murphy in the blue. Back and forth. Inside the circle they go. Looking for openings. Murphy looking headlock. And we have passivity on Phillips. Just a verbal first warning. to action. Taking ground is Murphy. He's got a front head. Nope. Phillips wrestles out of it now towards the edge of the bout, or edge of the mat. 
Well, he stepped out first. It's going to be two with continuation for Phillips. Halfway through the first period, we have a two-point lead for Phillips. Phillips is the 15th ranked wrestler in the nation at 190 pounds in high school. Murphy, the number 13 ranked wrestler. Overhook tie for Murphy. Stratton Phillips around the mat a little bit. Under a minute left in the first period. Phillips is Murphy was moving Phillips around, but a little bit more mat awareness needed from Murphy. She steps out, gives up another point, so Phillips leads 3-0 now. Short time left in the first. Final seconds tick away. It is the end of the first period. Both wrestlers go to their respective corners. Three point lead for Isabella Phillips. Murphy doing a good job controlling the center, but Phillips making the adjustments just when she needs to. Second period underway, and now Phillips comes out firing. Pushes Murphy to the boundary. Got a big snap down. He's trying to score on a go behind. Murphy grabs the leg. And there's two more for Phillips. This is big. Murphy was yeah, still in the bout, but needed to get a score in the second. Should be in a 5 0 hole. Phillips now just needs to run down the clock. Over two minutes to go, though, so. And Phillips seems to be taking control of this bout now. Murphy maybe running out of gas. Phillips. Drops Murphy out of bounds for another point. Nice snap down by Murphy, but Phillips counters. Four offered, but two confirmed. And it's 8-0, Isabella Phillips. And will she put this one away or will it go the distance? Murphy still has a shot, but odds are dwindling. Trying to snap. Phillips snap and quad pot defense from Murphy. And there is the two. Great fight by Murphy, but Isabella Phillips too strong. She'll take it 10 0. 
well done, Isabella Phillips, from the Outlaw Wrestling Club in Washington. From Bellingham, Washington, and don't know if I pronounced this correctly, but Wallacum High School. Back. Are you videoing her doing that? I don't want to get in front of you. Oh. I don't want to get in front of you for doing that. No, 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 no. I actually, I, 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 come, I basically capture them holding it. And there is the belt for Phillips. Okay, our final bout, I had to get some pronunciation. Talisa Matakayango in the red. Faith Tarrant in the blue. They are both ranked nationally. Number three, Matakayango in the nation from Utah. Tarrant number 12 in the nation. 235 pounds. For body ties. Trying for a hip toss. Matakayango gets four offer, but two is confirmed. They were on the mat. And staying with that hold and driving with her feet. Matakayango gets the first points. Tarrant from Vancouver, Washington, Prairie High School. At the Congo, Canyon View High School. She's going to the well again, but Tarrant fights through. And she ties it up. No, oh, no. Two to one. Or a one point lead for Mata Kayango. There was a step out in there after the takedown that I missed. So three to two. One point lead for Mata Kayango. Tarrant circling back towards the center. So the arena emptying out. This is the last bout in the entire U.S. Open. Now Tarrant gets a body lock over under. Tarrant trying to put Matakayango on the ground, but no, it's Matakayango with four. She's looking for the fall. She's in good position. She's got a minute to work. And the arms in a precarious position. There is the fall to Lisa Matakayango. Good fight from Tarrant. But that'll do it. And your champion will make sure you see her get her belt before signing off. Good fight from all the wrestlers.